Welcome, we are now going to have a look at part two of the completion of our subsidiary journals when we are recording transactions relating to debtors, that is people that we sell to and we are using a perpetual inventory system and we are doing our markup on cost. Now, you'll remember what we did in the first part. In the first part, we went and we identified all the transactions that will be recorded in the different journals by using different color markers. And then in the second one, we specifically had a look at recording those transactions that must be recorded in our debtors journal. Now, in part two, we are going to have a look at the recordings that will be recorded in the debtors allowance journal and the cash book receipt journal. As far as the debtors allowance journal is concerned, only transactions that has a bearing on transactions that was previously recorded in the debtors journal will be recorded in the debtors allowance journal. So really we are talking about people who bought things from us on credit and who are now returning some of that infantry and what we did in their case is we marked all of these transactions in blue so we see that on the 13th jay hansel returned trading inventory on the 26th it looks as if if opel returned trading inventory and on the 28th v nelson returned trading inventory and those three transactions will be recorded in our debtors allowance journal then although we are selling on credit it still happens from time to time that we have cash transactions as well and we cannot uh, just ignore that and so we are going to record those transactions in our cash book receipt journal and in the cash book receipt journal we are looking for transactions that's either marked or source documents rather that's either marked ds or dr for duplicate cash slips or duplicate receipts and those were all marked with this mustard color and we have one two three four five six seven eight of those transactions now the first one we are going to have a look at is the debtors allowance journal here again i just uh, recorded or put these the three transactions underneath each other exactly as we get it in the question and uh, we are going to do the calculations here on the right and then we are going to transfer it to the debtors allowance journal and i must warn you in the case of the debtors allowance journal the calculations were so straightforward that you could have just posted it to the journal directly but because we started with the system when we completed the debtors journal we're just going to follow the same reasoning here so uh, in our debtors allowance journal the main columns will be debtors control sales return and vat input in fact it'll be our only columns there so and of course the cost of sale and the cost of sale is there because we are working with a perpetual inventory system so the debtors control in the case of Hansel is just the amount given to us there so we can just put it in there the sales returns to calculate the sales return, we must take out the VAT, so we divide by 1.15. The VAT input now, because remember, when we recorded transactions in the debtors journal, those were sales and we had to pay VAT over to SARS on those transactions. Now our clients are bringing some of that back, so we are entitled to reclaim that vat back from SARS now so therefore it is vat input the difference between the debtors control and the sales amount and the cost of sale in all these cases there's nothing uh, special going on we can just look at the sales returns and divide it by 1.55 for the cost of sales because as you now know our cost of sale is a 55% markup on cost 
and so we can just divide by 1.55 then we calculate the sale and we can go and do exactly the same for the other two transactions so there is not much going on in this journal it is merely uh, looking at it and recording it so now we know that we have our document numbers it's those they were given okay we know on what dates the transaction took place because it was given we have the details of the transaction in other words we know which one of our debtors it is that is returning the trading inventory and now we simply bring down the numbers that we recorded there and we bring it into the appropriate journal once we've done that you must remember to add up the columns because it is the the, the totals that you will post to your ledger accounts at the end of the month so we can quickly add that and remember again you get marks for the adding and then also you must say whether the account is going to be debited or credited well debtors was debited so uh, debtors control was debited when we made the sale so it is credited when there is a return that input is asset account that is increasing so that must be debited sales returns and VAT make up debtors and our accounting equation must balance so that is the debit and cost of sales will be a credit if sales return was a debit so this is a very simple journal to complete now let's move on to our cash book receipt journal in the cash book receipt journal once again i have copied the information that was in our answer book or in our question paper rather uh, i'm going to do the calculations here on the right and uh, then i am going to transfer it to the cash book receipt journal here now i will see that there is a bit more going on in the cash book receipt journal than there was going on in the debtors and the debtors allowance journal and the reason for that is this these sundries transactions here and it means um, the only thing this means it is not just transactions that relates to inventory and to sales that will be in here and debtors control but also other transactions for that we will receive cash for and uh, those will not be part of debtors control or sales but they will still have to be recorded and so we are going to record those under sundry so let's have a look here so the first thing we are looking at is this uh, additional capital contribution in cash from the owner so the owner gives us an amount of cash it is given now there can be no vat implication there it is simply an amount that he is contributing a capital amount so under sundries we are going to say that's capital we are going to record the amount just as it is there is of course no cost of sales here there's no vat exclusive discount that is how we record the transaction there's not much to it then the next transaction where we have the sale of trading inventory well that is the amount that goes into our bank account we have to do, divide by 1.15 to calculate the sales and the vat output will simply be the difference between the amounts exactly the way we recorded a transaction in our debtors journal it is just that this transaction is for cash and it is not a credit transaction then we see here that there is a dividend that we receive from computer share so we can put in the amount there 7930 it is dividends received and it is the exact same amount that we record in the bank that we will record under sundries there that is not a problem okay what i see what i forgot to do here and that's because my space is a little bit of a problem i forgot to calculate the ca the cost of sales 
for this cash transaction here well the cost of sales will simply be our sales remember divided by 1.15 as we have done on a couple of occasions now good so what you see every what we're putting here under sundries is really the name of the account that we are going to record the transaction under Remember these headings here, these are the names of accounts. I'm just reminding you. And so under Sundries, we must identify the account that we are going to post it to. Now here we have something a little bit different. We see that M Lang, we are selling say, inventory to him. Uh, the inventory is marked at 17,080 Rand, but he is going to get a trade discount now just to follow the reasoning again i did it when we did the debtors journal as well but i'm going to do it again uh, remember that's the mark price he is getting a discount on the marked price but it's the discount is always given on the vat exclusive amount and the cost of sales is not influenced by the discount we are getting so let's look at that amount here and we have to look at the vat exclusive amount before the discount so we take the 17080 that was given and we divide that by 1.15 to get 14852 okay so that is what the normal selling price would have been but now we are going to give him a 7% or 6.5% discount. So he is only going to pay 93.5% uh, of that. So we can come to here, the sales, and we say the sales is that amount multiplied by 0 0.935. Okay, 90, that is 6.5% from 100. And then we get a sales number of 13886. We multiply with 15% to get the VAT amount, and then we add the sales and the output VAT to get to the amount that is going to reflect in our bank account. Okay. Of course, what we also need to do is calculate the cost of sales, as always, based on the sales price, but excluding the discount okay we don't our costs don't go down just because we get some give somebody a discount so it's got to be calculated on this vat exclusive amount before the discount so this is the amount we are going to divide by 1.55 and therefore our cost of sales is 9582 rand good Let's have a look here at the next one. It's a delivery income of 74725. So that is the amount that is going to go into our bank account. It is delivery income is the account name. It's not sales. It's not debtors control. So it's delivery income. We have to take out the VAT because delivery income is a standard VAT rate item. So we take out the VAT and we put in the difference between the amounts under our output VAT. When we get to the next transaction, it says that Mr. Hansel gives us a check and he is paying an account here. It says that owing on the month, uh, the start of the month, it was 25580. Do have a hunch there might be a little, a little bit more going on here. Let us just go to the given info. Uh, and maybe I should have a look at the date on which this happened on the 26th. Just go back to the given info. Um, it says received a check from Jay Hansel, no discount. It's, it's just a normal payment on account. So they're giving us the balance at the beginning of the month. Um, but we're really not going to focus too much on that now because it is we are not told that he is settling his account simply that he is paying making a payment on the account so in his case we can say that is the amount that we receive that is the amount that is going into the bank 
and that is the amount that is going to reflect on the debtor's control. So we are now going to subtract this amount from his individual account. No VAT implication, because remember, the VAT was already taken care of when we issued the invoices. Okay, so when he makes the payment, there is no VAT implication. Then the last transaction is to ESCO MES. There is a sale of trading inventory here. The trading inventory was marked up by 55% on the selling price. So what is changing here? The markup percentage for this particular customer is different than our normal 55% on cost. Here, it is 55% on selling price, meaning that the cost of sale will be 45% of the selling price. The full amount can be recorded under bank. We take out the VAT to calculate the sales and the VAT output is the difference between the two amounts. When we calculate the cost of sale, then we can say here, okay, um, cost of sale is just our sale. Now multi multiplied by 45%. Remember, this is 55% is profit, so 45% must be cost of sales. So it's not the normal divide by 1.55, this is multiplied by 0 0.45. And we do that. Okay. Then we receive from V. Nelson a check and in, in his case we are going to give him an eight percent settlement discount and now we are going to use the amount that they gave us there that he started his month on so at the beginning of the month he owed us thirteen thousand one hundred and eighty five rand okay that was the beginning of the month then Let's go and look what happened to Mr. Nelson. Just go have a look at the given info. So we now just looking for under details here for Nelson. Here, there was an additional sale of trading inventory to Mr. Nelson. Then we must go and look to see if he didn't return anything. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. Aha, he did. He returned some trading inventory and only then does he settle his account. So we have to bring into account his starting balance as well as his purchases and his purchases returns. So let's go and have a look at that. So how do we do it? The first thing we have to do is we have to see what was the amount that was outstanding. Well, it is that 13185 that we are told that he um, had at the beginning of the month. To that, we must add the sale that was recorded in the debtors journal, and we must subtract the return that was recorded in the debtors allowance journal. That will give us the amount outstanding. So at the point that he pays his account, he, the amount outstanding is 70,720 Rand. He then pays uh, as a certain amount. It tells us that he gets an 8% settlement discount. So if he gets an 8% settlement discount, it means that he's only paying 92% of the amount. The other 8% is the discount. So we can take that outstanding amount and we now multiply that with 92% or 0 0.92. And then we can see exactly what he paid and what he paid was 65,062 Rand and 58 cents. So this is the amount that we are going to record under bank. And that is also the amount that we are going to post under debtors return. Okay. Now you will ask me what happens to the difference between these two it's not recorded in this journal it will be recorded in the general journal okay now that we have 
done everything that we needed to do in terms of the calculations. We've calculated everything correctly. We can simply now go and we can transfer these transactions one by one to our cash book receipt journal. And that is what we do. Simple transfer, we don't have to calculate anything now. All the calculations has been done. Let's do that. Uh, and that. Okay, good. So once we have transferred all the transactions, we can go and we can tally all the columns again. We can see that 311 a uh, thousand rand almost three hundred and twelve thousand rand went into our bank account via cash deposits the debtors control seventy one thousand was paid into by debtors in the month fat output we calculated sales we calculated and then here we do go and we add that column but just remember that these amounts will not really be total in any ledger they will they will appear these three amounts in different ledger accounts of course there is nothing in those two columns there that we can total and then once we've done that last thing we have to do is to say whether the account is going to be debited or credited always easy when we see bank we know that bank is an asset account and they increase on the debit side and then really everything else add up to the bank account so we know that everything else is going to be credited just have a look here under Sunday so I didn't just say credit I said credit individual accounts and in this case I'm referring to these three accounts that will all be credited and that is how we record transactions in our debtors allowance journal and record transactions in our cash book receipt journal. Thank you.